ජීවිතේ වැඩිපුර ලැබෙන හොඳම දේවල් දෙන්න දැන් SLT Broadband වෙති 75% දක්වා වැඩිපුර ඩේටා සතුට ජනවාරි 15 වෙනිදා සිට ශ්‍රී ලංකා ටෙලිකොම් Ultimatum to PM Some parliamentarians demand changes from the Prime Minister and if the change does not happen and we go for that radical step i anticipate we will succeed in that endeavor fight against drugs prime minister ranil wickremasinghe has seeks coalition to eliminate the drug menace you cannot be soft on drugs you cannot be soft whether your law enforcement whether your administering justice local bodies Minister Faisal Mustafa takes an extension to set up local authorities. So I, I intend to have a further dialogue with the election commission and then if they request a need for some amendments I will do so. Mitigating risks. Minister Mangala Samarvira highlights economic risks faced by developing nations. It is clear that Sri Lanka like many developing countries faces such refinancing risks in the coming years. Crisis in Syria. Fighting continues in Ghouta despite the 5-hour ceasefire announced by Russia. Good evening and welcome to First at 9. I'm Dhamik Ekanayake. We start off with today's top local stories. Now the joint opposition and the Janata Vimukti Peramuna today voiced their support for a possible no confidence motion against Prime Minister Ranil Wickremasinghe. Responding to the statement made by State Minister Pali Tarange Bandara at a media briefing today, both factions said that they will support a no confidence motion tabled by the UNP. State Minister Pal Tarange Bandara convened a media briefing yesterday and said that a group of UMP parliamentarians are prepared to table a no confidence motion against Prime Minister Ranil Wickremasinghe to remove him from office. Apata anukampa virahitava hetanindama siddheno viswasa bangyak sandha kriya karan. The state minister's remarks was brought up in a media briefing of the joint opposition today. Mami Se Singh, I am especially thankful that Minister Paul Taranga Bandara stuck with his decision. I should especially mention that all 53 of us will vote in favour of it. In the meantime, joining a discussion with the BBC Sandesha, JVP parliamentarian Bima Ratnayaka said that his party will assist any such no confidence motion. We will definitely vote in favour. The main incident which triggered the breakdown of the UNP is the bond scam 3.6 million voted for the UNP despite revelations of such a scam that vote conveys the sentiment our thief is good for us in the meantime some ministers expressed their views on the potential no confidence motion against the prime minister following the cabinet meeting held today we don't have to talk about it yet since no such motion is brought if such a thing manifests will take a decision as a national government that's an issue of the unp and they themselves will resolve it there could be issues within a party we should take a realistic approach in moving forward there is no 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 confidence motion which is ongoing at the moment but what my colleague honorable rangabandar said was that if the party is not going to change if it is not going to take the results of the last local government election seriously if it is not going to make structural changes inside the party if it is not going to make proper appointments of capable young ministers uh, by giving them proper positions then of course we will have to take a more drastic step and one of those steps could be even something like a no confidence motion is what the honorable minister said not that we are in the process of signing one at the moment and if we go for one of those steps i think we will meet with triumph in the meantime state minister paltarange bandara expressed views on a possible no confidence motion following a discussion held at the ump headquarters city kota this afternoon මොකද දන්නේ නැහැ මොකද දන්නේ නැහැ ගිහිල්ලා ගී කී බලමු මොන හරි කරන්න වෙනවා නැතුව මේක මෙහෙම බෑනේ Now Prime Minister Ranil Wickremasinghe is of the view that the use of illicit drugs pose a greater threat than terrorism The Prime Minister made this remark today while attending a function in the area of Katukurunda in Kaluthara 
The 35th anniversary of the Police Special Task Force in Kalutara was celebrated this evening with Prime Minister Rana Vikramasinghe presiding as the chief guest at the Police Training College in Kalutara. The Premier also witnessed the passing out parade of the STF 74th Brigade. Illicit drugs are everywhere in the country today. In the past, we lost numerous lives to bombs or bullets. But because of drugs, we are going to lose our future generation. Security forces, as well as ministries such as youth, education and health, have to work together. Sri Lanka Navy and Customs should take action to stop narcotic entry in the country. Then we have to disrupt their distribution network. I remember one saying in America, You cannot be soft on drugs. You cannot be soft. Whether you are law enforcement, whether you are administering justice, or whether you are doing correction services, you cannot be soft on drugs. Now, flight delays and cancellations continued to hamper operations of the national carrier. Sri Lankan Airlines cancelled four flights scheduled for tomorrow amid what they highlight as unforeseen events. Now, starting Sunday, major delays were experienced throughout the Sri Lankan Airlines network, and today, eight flights were reported delayed. Issuing an urgent travel alert yesterday, Sri Lankan Airlines said its customers were subjected to great inconvenience and delayed flights due to a combination of unforeseen events, including a birth strike which damaged an aircraft in Cochin. Although the delays are currently easing, passengers continue to be inconvenienced today as well. Sri Lankan Airlines set up a 24-hour hotline for passengers to obtain flight details. In such a backdrop, according to Sri Lankan Airlines, eight flights were delayed today. Two flights from Colombo to Bangkok, five flights scheduled for Bangalore, Cochin, Chennai, Vishakhapatnam and Trivandrum, as well as flights to Guangzhou in China were delayed. Sri Lankan Airlines said that some flights were delayed for three to four hours. In addition, it said that four flights scheduled for tomorrow are cancelled between Seychelles and Mumbai. Accordingly, UL-707 to Seychelles, UL-708 from Seychelles to Colombo, UL-143 from Colombo to Mumbai and UL-144 from Mumbai to Colombo are cancelled. Sri Lankan Airlines added that the passengers of UL-143 and 144 are shifted to UL-141 and 142. Passengers are requested to contact their 24-hour hotline 019-733-1979 or travel agents to get flight information before setting off to the Brandar Naik International. National Airport. In addition, passengers can also access flight information by entering the correct mobile phone number and email in their Fly Smiles accounts. The cabinet meeting was held for the first time today following the reshuffle of the UNP ministerial positions on Sunday. The meeting was held under the auspices of the president at the president's office this morning. Following the cabinet meeting today, several ministers expressed their views to the media. Some are abroad while others have informed that they would not be able to attend today's session. I am very happy with the decision. I am less burdened. The president read out a few names of those who could not attend today's meeting. With regards to the cabinet reshuffle, you will see the president making changes to the UPFA ministerial positions in another two weeks. Some ministers from our party are abroad, four of them. When they return, changes will take place. Meanwhile, Lakshman Kiriala assumed duties as the new Cabinet Minister of State, Enterprise and Candy Development at the World Trade Centre in Colombo today. Parliamentarian of the United People's Freedom Alliance, Dalla Salah says there was a mistake in the calculation of election results pertaining to members from additional list. He made this remark at a media briefing held today. There was a mistake in calculating election results. We are revealing this to the media for the first time. Compilation of the list of hang members from the additional list is completely wrong. It is a grave issue. One member of the commission admitted that there was a fault in calculations. However, the rest did not admit it. Among the 76 local authorities that are currently facing issues, there are 36 local bodies where authorities can be set up. This should be rectified, otherwise we will take this to court. The correction process will lead to over 200 members from three parties losing their positions. They were given from the additional list. The Act clearly says that members will not be appointed from the additional list on decimal points. 
but those who received decimal points have been appointed as members dasama gana ngambecha ayatat me mantu dura pradana karala tiyena meanwhile executive director of the campaign for free and fair elections keerthi tanukun says that the election commission failed to release the official election results අද වෙනකොට තාමත්ම පැහැදිලි තාම නිල මැති වර්ණ ප්‍රතිපලය නිකුත් කර ගන්න බැරි තැනකට ඇවිල්ලා. The election commission failed to issue the final result of the election. The Ministry of Local Governments and Provincial Councils was planning to set up new local authorities by the 6th of March. However, the election commission yesterday had asked for 14 additional days for the task. We have to realize that local authorities cannot be set up without solving present political issues in the country. දේශපාලන වියවුල විසඳා ගන්නේ නැතුව මොන්නම ආකාරයකට හවත් ලංකාවේ මේ පළාත් පාලන ආයතන ස්ථාපනය කරන්නට බැරි බව අපි තේරුම් ගත යුතුව තිබෙනවා. Meanwhile Minister of Local Government and Provincial Councils Vice Mustafa revealed that local authorities will be set up on the 20th of March following the request by the election commission. Journalists also raised questions on topic of 25% women representation at local bodies. First we have to see how workable it is with 25% women in local bodies the provincial council act which was passed with regard to elections gives party the discretion to do so if they require it's it's not a mandatory obligation but before me being vocal about women being there in provincial councils i would say that we all should see how workable it is at local bodies so i will be local for women's representations to increase in every tier of government but i also would practically look at it to see how successful it is at local bodies we are in a initial stage so we, I, i intend to have a further dialogue with the election commission and then if they request a need for some amendments i will do so but i will do everything possible to maintain the 25% women's quota to the maximum and only when there is difficulties of achieving that and if there is some amendments to be brought about we will consider Former President Mahindra Rajapaksa says that the active liability management bill should be resolutely opposed by every citizen of Sri Lanka. The release reads that under the proposed law the executive will be able to raise over 1 trillion rupees in debt and make regulations on how that money will be used. He further noted that as long as it can be established that they acted in good faith no civil nor criminal liability whatsoever will be associated with those involved with regard to the manner in which this money is used. The former president also noted that given the scandals that have already taken place in the issuance of public debt under the current government the danger inherent in the proposed liability management bill is obvious. Now we're moving on to a tragic story the 10-year-old Susit Nirmal from Chilao who was reported missing over the past 2 days was found dead today. His body was discovered this morning and the police suspect that the child was sexually abused before being murdered. 10-year-old Susit Nirmal, a grade 4 student of Irunavilla College was reported missing since last Sunday. Following a complaint filed by the child's mother, police officers attached to the Chilao police station conducted search operations over the last two days. <laughs> Meanwhile, CCTV at a store which the victim frequented had footage from Sunday showing Susit Nirmal and another individual visiting the store. A friend of the victim told media that the man in the footage had asked both Susit Nirmal and him to join in capturing parrots a request the victim's friend turned down. Hey mama batka gaya dia hi edit ma batka gaya dia it was min mara gaya lamya ten ni gela giwa it was man en ne gela avahare da it was mata ten ni ko gira walla ne man ko mata da man dakka piye gutta de diye na man ko mata da After more than 24 hours of search in the forest area of Muapitiya, residents of Irunavilla and officials attached to the Chilao police station found Susit's body this morning under a tree. Police say they suspect that the child was sexually abused before being murdered. Late in the day, the magisterial inquest was conducted at the scene by additional district judge and Chilao magistrate Rakita P. Abe Singha. He ordered the judicial medical officer at the general hospital in Chilao to conduct a post-mortem and ordered police to conduct further investigations. Meanwhile, police identified the suspect to be a resident of Sevadavatta who is a coconut picker. The suspect has since absconded. 
Let's now take a look at some court cases and rulings given throughout the day. The Court of Appeal today extended the stay order which was issued preventing the FCID from taking action against former Defence Secretary Gotabe Rajapaksha under the Public Properties Act. Accordingly, the stay order was extended until the 23rd of March. Meanwhile, Court of Appeal informed the Attorney General to state his views by the 2nd of March regarding former President Secretary Lalit Viratunga's request to leave the country. Viratunga, who is on bail, pertaining to the Silk Cloth case, presented a revision petition to the Court of Appeal, which was taken into consideration today. Commission to investigate bribery or corruption arrested the Assistant Superintendent of Police in the Chilau Division, Saman Jayatilika Bandara, under the charges of accepting a monetary bribe worth 30,000 rupees. He was later ordered to be remanded until the 7th of March by the Chief Magistrate of Chilau. The ASP has allegedly received bribes from an owner of a massage parlour in Deulapitiya. The Bribery Commission today questioned former Minister of Finance Ravi Karunanayake for four hours and recorded a statement. When asked, the former minister stated that the commission had questioned him with regards to a query pertaining to the ministry which is under the purview of Minister Richard Badidin. Now let's take a look at a few other stories from across Sri Lanka. Residents in the area of Kudaoye in Nuarelia are urging authorities to capture a leopard which is frequent in the area. Locals say that leopards enter villages to prey on dogs. Minister of Education Akhilaviraj Karyavasam says that he is not happy about the cabinet's decision to scrap the provision of tabs to school students. He expressed his displeasure over the move at a function held at the Ministry of Education. The GMO says that there are suspicions over the failure to communicate the decision taken by the President to abolish Saitam to court. This was stated by Secretary of the GMOA, Dr. Nalin Deherath, at a media briefing today. You are watching Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel, Other Verana 24-7. Welcome back. You're watching Other Than a 24-7, well, more like First at Nine on Other Than a 24-7. Now, Minister of Finance and Mass Media, Mangala Samaravira, says that developing countries like Sri Lanka face refinancing risk in the coming years. The minister and current chair of the Intergovernmental Group of 24 added that in order to mitigate such risks, concerted and coordinated policy response is required, particularly in the sphere of public debt management. He made this remark at the G24 Technical Group meeting in Colombo today. The two-day technical group meeting of the G24 countries was inaugurated by the Minister of Finance and Mass Media and Chair of the G24 Bureau, Mangala Samaravira, today. The meeting saw the participation of over 45 delegates consisting of secretaries of the Finance Ministry, governors and senior representatives of the Central Bank from member countries. Day one of the technical meeting was held under the theme Debt Management and Sustainability where discussions were held on debt management and sustainability challenges faced and strategies used by policymakers, both in terms of addressing macroeconomic linkages and improving liability management. The IMF forecasts the gross financing needs for 2018 in emerging and middle-income economies range from 4% to 43% of the GDP with an average of 10.4%. In many developing economies, a high proportion of this outstanding debt is held by non-residents. This creates added complexities in the policy response. It is clear that Sri Lanka, like many developing countries, faces such refinancing risks in the country. Coming years. This warrants a concerted and coordinated policy response to mitigate such risk. Because of this variety of impending developments in the global financial markets, the World Bank and IMF jointly formulated a new framework on debt sustainability for low-income countries. This new framework, which will be implemented in the second half of 2018, would help guide countries and donors in mobilizing financing for development needs. Meanwhile, the minister spoke on the country's loan repayment for 2018 at an event held in Matara yesterday. If we talk about the income and expenditure of the government since gaining independence, the highest loan payments fall in 2018. If you want to know how serious the situation is, the total income expected for the government this year is 2.6 trillion rupees. But we have loan repayments amounting to 1.9 trillion rupees this year alone.
Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, Christian Lagarde, said today that the global economy was showing broad basis growth, but the landscape was shifting with heightened risk of trade disputes, monetary policy normalization and technological change. Lagarde speaking to an IMF or at an IMF conference in Jakarta in preparation for the fund's annual meeting in Bali in October said the IMF was expecting global growth to reach 3.9% in 2018 and 2019. This is unchanged from the IMF's forecast in January and up from 3.7% in 2017. The recent volatility in financial markets has been a reminder that a fundamental economic transition is underway. Policymakers around the world, and probably taking turn, not all starting in a synchronized way, are preparing for the gradual normalization of monetary policy in major advanced economies, and we know that this will have spillover effects across the world. And clearly, policymakers around the world need to remain vigilant about the likely effects on financial stability, including the prospect of volatile capital flows. Now, the International Energy Agency says the United States will overtake Russia as the world's biggest oil producer by 2019 as the country's shale oil boom continues to upend global markets. U.S. crude oil output rose about 10 million barrels per day late last year for the first time since the 1970s, overtaking top oil exporter Saudi Arabia. The U.S. Energy Information Administration said earlier this month that U.S. output would exceed 11 million barrels per day by late 2018. That would take it past top producer Russia, which pumps just below that mark. At the primary Treasury bill auction, the yield of one-year Treasury bills spiked by 14 basis points to 5.59% to reach the highest in six months. The central bank rejected the bids for three-month and six-month maturities, despite them being offered at the auction. At the Colombo stock market today, the day's trading concluded in opposite direction, with the ASPI declining marginally to 6,559.42, down by 0.9 index points, while the S&P SL20 gained 0.14 index points to close at 3,723.55. Turnover marked 2 billion rupees, supported by several crossings, which accounted for 78% of the total turnover. We now have daily market update with Imeshi Fernando from the Colombo Stock Exchange. The market capitalization at the end of the day was 3,049.9 billion rupees. Top five gainers of the day were Adam Capital, Love's Gas, Love's Gas Non Voting, Anilana Hotels and Lanka Milk Foods. Today's foreign purchases were 1.62 billion rupees and foreign sales were 1.79 billion rupees. Welcome back. Now let's take a look at news from around the world. Fighting continued in the rebel-held eastern Ghouta area in Syria today during the first daily five-hour pause ordered by the government's ally Russia. Activists said that there were government air and artillery strikes while Russia said rebels shelled a humanitarian corridor meant to let civilians leave. As a result, there were no UN aid deliveries or medical evacuations. Some 393,000 people are trapped in the enclave near Damascus, which has been besieged by the government since 2013. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, a UK-based monitoring group, said more than 500 people have been killed in the strikes by pro-Assad forces in the past week. Meanwhile, France has urged Russia to use its influence over Syrian President Bashar al-Assad to secure a 30-day truce covering the whole country following UN Security Council's resolution on Saturday demanding a nationwide cessation of hostilities 
at least for 30 days. Meanwhile, British Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson said today that Britain would consider joining U.S. military strikes against the Syrian government if there is evidence of chemical weapons being used against civilians. The European Union yesterday warned the Maldivian government of potential targeted measures on its officials if the current political situation does not fall in line with domestic or democratic principles and separation of powers. The Council of European Union issued a statement briefing seven conclusions on the deterioration or deteriorating situation in the Maldives and called on its authorities, particularly law enforcement forces, to act with restraint. On the 1st of February, the Maldives Supreme Court overturned convictions of nine political leaders which gave the opposition a majority in parliament. Maldives President Abdullah Yamin on the 5th of February, however, declared a state of emergency and arrested former president and half-brother Mahmoud Abdul Gayoom, as well as two Supreme Court judges, in moves the opposition called a purge in the Indian Ocean Island nation. Maldives Parliament approved an extension of the state of emergency by 30 days last Tuesday in a vote the opposition condemned as illegal. In the meantime, many countries voiced concern over the situation which is prevalent in the archipelago. In the latest development, the European Union has warned the Maldivian government of potential targeted measures on its officials if the current political situation does not fall in line with democratic principles and separation of powers. Meanwhile, acknowledging the Supreme Court's landmark ruling on the 1st of February, the Council called on the government to immediately lift the state of emergency and restore all constitutionally guaranteed rights to citizens. It also called for the immediate release of all political prisoners and condemned the politically motivated arrests. U.S. Ambassador to Sri Lanka and the Maldives, Atul Keshap, in a tweet stated that he mourns the current situation in the country. Let's now take a look at some of the emerging stories from across the world. An American tourist was arrested in Japan after a local woman he met through a dating app went missing earlier this month, with her body believed to have been dismembered and scattered across several locations in western Japan. After initially refusing to answer questions, the suspect reportedly told police day before yesterday that he had abandoned the woman's body, leading them to other body parts, her torso, legs and arms, dumped in three separate wooded areas in Osaka and Kyoto. Authorities and relief workers in flooded Bolivia are rushing to provide aid to thousands of people after heavy rains flooded large swaths of land. Guane, a town in north of La Paz department, has been heavily flooded after rivers in the area rose rapidly, leaving local residents little time to rescue their possessions. Gun owners have taken to social media to destroy their rifles and pistols in response to the Florida high school shooting where 17 teens and staff members died on the 14th of February. Videos and photographs shared on social media using hashtag one less showed gun owners breaking different kinds of guns. Time for sports and we start with cricket, but it's not good news for Sri Lanka. Angelo Matthews' ongoing hamstring troubles have ruled him out of the Nidahas Trophy Tri-Nation Series, which begins next week. But there was more bad news for Sri Lanka in the approach to the tournament. Sri Lanka cricket selected a 20-member preliminary squad to choose the final 15-member squad to take part in the Hero Nidahas Trophy 2018, which is set to commence on the 6th of March. The final 15-member squad would be announced tomorrow. According to the preliminary squad, Dinesh Chandimal will once again lead the Sri Lanka T20 team as regular limited over skipper Angelo Matthews is yet to recover from a hamstring injury. Fast bowler Shehan Madhushank, who had made an impressive start to his international career in Bangladesh, has himself been ruled out by a hamstring strain he sustained in Bangladesh. All-rounder Silaguna Ratna, meanwhile, has been ruled out due to a rotator cuff strain. However, batsman Kusal Pereira, who had been among the injured in Bangladesh, had played two matches for Coles Cricket Club in the ongoing domestic T20 league and is fit enough to have been named in Sri Lanka's provisional 20-member squad. Now, Sri Lanka announced an 18-member hockey squad for the Asian Games qualifying round hockey tournament, which is scheduled to take place from the 2nd to the 10th of March 2018 at the Zultan Kabu Sports Complex in Muscat, Oman. The 18 members were selected out of a pool of 25 players from the Sri Lanka's men's national hockey team. With nearly a hundred-year history in hockey, Oman will use this opportunity to boost the side's performance among top Asian countries. For Sri Lanka, this will be the first time they take part in an Asian Games qualifying round. 
While the team will travel to Malaysia to participate in a few practice games, it is a point of note to mention that out of the 18 athletes or players selected for this team, a majority of them represent the security forces. Now, Fernando Alonso did six lap of, laps rather, of the Barcelona circuit before crashing into the gravel after a wheel came off his McLaren at the start of Formula One's preseason testing yesterday. The former world champion, who are, or were champions rather, who are starting a new engine partnership with Renault after three troubled years with Honda, played down the incident in which the right rear wheel came off Alonso's car during the first 40 minutes of a chilly morning in Spain as teams took part in their first official tests since November. The double world champion who gave the new papaya orange and blue car a trouble-free shakedown at the Navarra circuit in northern Spain on Friday endured a tough morning yesterday when a rear wheel came off his new car while on track in pre-season testing. Monday's test comes a year after a nightmare start for McLaren with Fernando Alonso managing only one lap before lunch after multiple engine failures. That set the tone for a dismal season that ended with the sport's second most successful team languishing in ninth place overall. The season starts in Australia on March 25th with McLaren seeking their first win since 2012. You are watching Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel. Verena 24-7. Very good evening and welcome to Forecast First. Now, temperatures will vary between 19 and 32 degrees Celsius over the course of the day. We can see that there will be a development of a low-pressure zone in the vicinity of Sri Lanka as well as high precipitation zones in the areas of the eastern coastal belt and will develop and move across the region over the course of the day. Now, this means we can expect some thunder showers in the areas of Batiklo as well as in Trincomalee, but some sunny weather is forecast for the Jaffna area. Now, moving downwards, we can expect some thunder showers in the areas of Kandy, Colombo and Gaul. That is it from your weather centre tonight. It's now time to take a look at your city-by-city -city forecast. And that's it from First at Nine here. And before we go, we'd like to show you some visuals of still fishing, termed as Riti Panna, which is, make that Riti Pan actually, which is a traditional fishing method practiced by fishermen along the southern coast of Sri Lanka, mainly in the areas of Valley Panna, Kogwala, Kumbalgama, and Arangwala. These still fishermen have become a favorable attraction to those passing by, especially tourists. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. the news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Other Verana 24-7.